Landmines and Jellyfish, welcome back to Knives, I guess, and it's 10 p.m. Do you know where your can of Chef Boyardee mini ravioli is? So, to open this up, we have the uh, Harbor Freight Icon Knife Watch, and my delivery date has been rescinded by FedEx. So, I have no idea when that's going to show up. FedEx is dropping not one, but both balls here. But, uh, so, we took a look at my relationship with and thoughts on Kershaw. And it seemed apropos to take a look at my relationship with and thoughts on uh, Gerber. Because the way I look at it, Gerber, Kershaw, and Schrade are kind of like the Ford, Chevy, and Dodge of uh, knives in this country. You know, if you're not really a knife guy, knife guy, but you want something better than, say, Ozark Trail or gas station knives or something like that, your default's probably going to be one of those three. Um, you know, and of course it's getting a little bit better now with a lot more variety, but it's always been one of those three for the people I knew that they were just brand loyal to like crazy. So of course my uncle, he was really brand loyal to Gerber. And, uh, when I went through the box of stuff that I got from, uh, his collection, you know, it, again, a box of just random stuff. I wish I could have gone through his house and gotten all of them, but that's neither here nor there. But I found this guy. And uh, so I looked at it, and I wasn't sure exactly what it was. I had to do some image searching to figure out it was a pair frame. However, when I got this, there was a bunch of screws missing. It was barely held together. And uh, so I emailed Gerber and got some uh, some bits and pieces. However, they didn't send the right ones because I ordered for a pair frame, not a pair frame two, because I didn't know there was a distinction. So these things didn't quite fit, and I didn't have a Torx head. So by the time I blew out two Allen wrenches on these... You should be able to see here where I cut a notch in it to take a flathead screwdriver, and it looks like a blind apprentice went at it. But I got her back together. And, uh, you know, I carried this thing a little bit, and uh, it, it really isn't a bad knife at all. I will say right now, it's tipped down, and I hate tipped down, but we all live in sin. But I got this thing together and working again before I really, really got back into knives like I am now and before I really discovered the joys, nay, the comfort and sheer ecstasy of tip-up carry. So uh, this kind of sent me down a, a bit of a rabbit hole. And uh, in November of 2018, I ordered the uh, Paraframe Mini Tanto. And this thing is a nail neck knife. And, uh, you know, it's really small. So I was thinking maybe fifth pocket carry or quiet carry places where a big knife wasn't necessarily welcome. And I didn't end up carrying it. It was uh, $7.75. And, uh, you know, I just, I never carried it. And, uh, you know, it's a nice little knife. It's good enough. Um, I don't have a really big problem with it. And, of course, it's tipped down, but I'm not that bothered by it for a knife this small. And if it's got a nail nick on it, it doesn't matter. I'm going to have to open it two-handed anyways. It doesn't matter which direction the tip is. So, I mean, it's a nice enough little knife. I just ended up not carrying it. Um, I think I was just grabbing other stuff. And, uh, you know, this was kind of kicking in while I was buying a bunch of other stuff at the same time. But for the price, I couldn't really argue for something this small. And uh, so up next, I bought a Paraframe Mini. And uh, I'm not sure where that one went. I have a blank Paraframe Mini. But, uh, you know, this is the regular Mini. And in 2019, in January, I bought uh, a customized Mini. And uh, I got the name of my blacksmithing shop on it. And uh, that's also like an old channel that I abandoned a few years ago because I haven't been doing any work to display. But I thought it was nice to have something like this. And I ordered another one for a giveaway. And that one had an inside joke on it. And by the way, if you've got a good inside joke... This custom was $15.25 once you added in the engraving. So it's not that expensive to do something like this with a good inside joke on it for one of your friends. You know, this is something that I do like being able to do. And some of the Amazon shops will customize knives for, you know, 5 to 15 bucks. I can't be angry at it. You know, I like this, the whole thing. Um, but at some point between then and, uh, and uh, a little bit later, it's... Uh, I don't have this listed on my Amazon sales, so I can't really look it up, but there's a Paraframe 1 right there. And I really like the size and shape of this thing. It's really comfortable, and this is, it's a good toolbox knife, and it's a good all-around carry knife, especially if you're not, like, a knife guy, knife guy, and you're not that worried about it, because, I mean, these things aren't expensive. They're really not, and they're good to throw around. The only really, uh, real caveat is you don't want this in a pocket full of keys, because you got this gap right here, which, you know, I could wedge my finger in and get cut on. So that's the one thing you got to look out for is it's not a it's not a pocket full of keys carry. Um, you definitely got to have some dedicated space for it or a pocket where you just have larger objects that can't get caught up in here, you know. And uh, 
after all this, I ordered the uh, the rip stop, and that was in December of I think 2018. Yeah, it looks like 2018. I wrote all this down, so I'm kind of parsing while I do this so I can give you more information than I've been giving. Uh, but this thing was $7.72, and it's a 5CR15 blade. I figured for the price, you can't argue with it, especially with how funky it looks. Like, this is kind of approaching some of the weirder CRKT stuff. I really, really liked how it looked. And it's tipped down. And say it with me, children. I hate tipped down, but we all live in sin. But again, this was from the before time. Um, and I was going to carry this and show it off and, you know, really use it. But this thing is tiny, tiny, tiny. Look at that palm of my hand. Gone. And the one big issue I have is where the thumb stud is and how this handle's set up. I don't have a good way to grip it and use the thumb stud. Um, I can do it. It's just not the most comfortable thing in the world. The liner lock's not bad. Closing it's not bad. It's just trying to use that thumb stud with one hand. Uh, my hands are too big for it. Um, I keep meaning to give this one to the wife because she likes the way it looks. But this is not a bad knife. It's just I my hands are too big for it. So Gerber did a good job with this one, especially for $7.72. Like, this is actually a really good value. And, uh, you know, I, I would have definitely enjoyed carrying this, kind of like my uh, weird CRKTs, if it just fit my hand. And a little bit later on down the road, um, I'm not sure exactly when because I I didn't buy this through Amazon. I bought it through a different website because I was looking for full-size pair of frames for me and a friend of mine. And uh, we had a guy that hosted a bunch of blacksmiths at a gathering called Quad State in Ohio, which is basically Blade Show, but for blacksmiths. So I got him one with uh, his nickname from the group on it, but I also got one for myself. And I was able to get my logo engraved on it, which was the other sell for me right there. And again, it's just a pair of frame one. It's nothing too special, but I do think the pair of frame is a good knife, especially if you got someone that's not super into knives like we are. You know, this is a good one to give them and say, here, enjoy, use it as a knife. Um, you know, I can't really argue with the value in them. Like, I don't carry them because they're tipped down, and there's a lot that, you know, I just, um, that doesn't fit the way I carry and use things now. But that's not a knock on these knives. They're still good knives. And I wound up with a ton of them, so that should tell you how I feel about them. A um, little bit later on down the road, and one thing to mention about this, we know the blade steel on this, but the paraframe. All right, I looked at all the listings that I bought these from. Not a single one mentions the blade steel. I looked at other listings. Not a one of them mentions the blade steel. However, I went online and did a Google search, and uh, it wasn't the longest, most thorough search in the world, but I saw a couple of Blade forum posts, and everyone's asking, what's the Blade steel on this? And nobody knows. It's some Gerber mystery steel, and there's no good reason they're not telling us what it is. It's just there. So I'm assuming it's equivalent to 440 or 420. Um, you know, again, it's a cheap knife, so it's going to have some cheap stuff on it, but it would be great to know what the blade steel is so I can sound a little bit smarter while I'm recording this video. Um, you know, so we don't know what the blade steel is, and that's the weirdest damn thing for a knife that I've seen in a while, especially with this many sellers and this many people asking, why don't we know? But a little bit later on, April of 2020, 2021. Words are hard. I got the Gerber Jukebox, and I bought this because I really, really, really like these scales. Um, I didn't really check the picture to see if it had the mark of the beast. Tip down carry. However, the way this is laid out, um, tip up carry would actually be a little bit easier to use, um, I think, because I could actually carry it in my pocket and still deploy it. But the way it is with it being tipped down, this thing digs into the love handle. And remember, children, it's not a dad bod. It's a father figure. But, you know, I'd, and I would still carry it if this could be replaced with a thumb stud or a back flipper because it just, it looks that good. I love the style on it, and I love the blade shape. You know, straight razor-ish, uh, sheep foot-ish. Now, one thing I can say, and I don't know how well it's going to show up here, this uh, grind line on the top is really wavy, and the edge here, look at how crappy that grind is. You know, this was the first issue I ran into with the uh, the Gerber budget knives because this was 30 bucks. So not like a giant, giant issue for there to be some issues, but I don't know how this got past QC with this bad of a grind on it. So this is just kind of a, it sits here and gathers dust. Like I don't really have a use for it and I don't want to put it clipped into a pocket full of keys because this uh, this acrylic is really beautiful. 
Like it really interacts with the light quite a bit. You can see some of it on video, but the chatoyance in this stuff very rarely shows up on camera the way it does in hand. It's a beautiful knife. I think it's a decent value. For anybody else that would be carrying in a way that I don't carry, because I carry stupid in the waistband, um, this would be a great knife, um, especially a great budget knife if you want some style points. So again, not Gerber's fault that I don't carry it. It's my fault for carrying tucked in the waistband and this thing not cooperating with me. But like I said, I do think if, if it was a tip-down carry, it would slide in there and be just fine. However, I can kind of see where they didn't go tip down because these scales are absolutely beautiful. You know, I'd almost rather see the bolster on this side and the scales, you know, extending down to here. But that's neither here nor there. I did pay for it because I like how it looked. So there is something good about it. Um, the last one in this batch that I picked up was December of 2021. And that was the Quadrant. And uh, this is a 7CR17 blade. This is a 7CR17 blade. And this was $25 and some change. And I bought this, again, because of the looks. You know, I like things that are black and white, and honestly, that goes right back to being a big fan of uh, Venom comic books when I was a kid. Um, I definitely read a lot more Marvel than DC, and when they popped out with a Venom having his own series, I got really into it. And uh, it's a character I love, and I don't think Sony did him justice in the movie completely, but they did what they could without the proper licensing to do it right. So I think they did a good job, but one thing that was missing was that big white spider logo on him, and... Uh, that that was disappointing, but that's neither here nor there. So I like the way this this thing is shaped. Um, this this square profile is actually really nice. Um, I did learn my lesson finally. It is tip up. Um, but that was again before I started scouring these pictures to make sure they were tip up before I bought them. I just kind of got lucky on this one. However, this one had some problems, and uh, I know I did a video on this earlier that you may or may not have seen, absolving the sins of Gerber. But this thing had an incredibly bad detent. It was so tight that you could flick as hard as you could preloading it, and it would open up maybe that far if you were lucky. Um, you had to throw your entire wrist into it and risk throwing it across the room to get it to flip open. And with everything that was in here, the, the washers and all that, you could hear it squeak when you opened and closed it from about two feet away. Like, you could hear the squeak. It was so bad. So, not too long ago, I took this thing as far apart as I could. And we have a guy that says Gerber needs to back off the Loctite. He's not wrong. This could not be removed. This could not be removed. These actually did get removed. But I was able to get enough stuff out of the way. Uh, I ended up putting it back together. But let's flick this thing. And the detent still ain't right. Like, that's about as far as you can get it. Like, let's preload it. It's still not that good. You still got to throw some wrist into it. But it can flick open. And the wrist motion, I don't know about you. But I do the wrist motion anyways because it feels good whenever it clicks open on that. And it makes me feel a little better about myself. But I was able to open this up and take the detent and just pull it out. And keep pulling it out a little bit until it relaxed enough to start working as normally as it could. I do wish the detent was right and this thing would just flip open off of a good flick. Like most of these, bearings might help. And as thick as these washers are, I may actually take a look and see if those bearings from that knife that broke would actually fit this. Because, it, honestly, if it was working good for 25 bucks, this would be a great little knife. Now, Gerber strikes again with the grind. Um, I don't know how well this will show up, but this grind line is incredibly uneven on this. Like, it's very wavy. And this side is also the same thing. This grind line just kind of tracks around and tracks up. Like, it wasn't a good grind, and I'm not sure how that got out the door like that, but their QC apparently is really bad on these budget knives. Now... Much like Kershaw, I don't have more expensive Gerbers to compare these to. So I do have a warm uh, a warm feeling towards Gerber. Like, all these knives are good in their own right. The ones that I can't carry are more of a me problem than a Gerber problem. You know, and I know, like, they're, they've kind of gone downhill a lot. And I'm not sure if it's because the company got sold to another company, which usually happens. A knife company gets bought by another company, and it all goes downhill. Um, looking at Ontario to see it, how bad they turn out since they got bought, but I did get a rat too before the old stock ran out. But, uh, you know, this is kind of where I'm at with Gerber. These are the ones that I know that I have. I may have forgotten one or two. And again, they're all good knives in their own right for doing different jobs. These two, it's my fault for, uh, it's my problem with these, not Gerber's problem. So, uh, you know, if, if you like some good cheap knives, some of these are good go-tos. If you don't mind tip-down carry, the Paraframe is a great dirt-cheap knife, especially to 
throw in the toolbox, abuse and abandon. Um, travel carry, you know, that way if it gets broken or lost, no one cares. You can just buy another one. And uh, unless you get lucky and get one out of the package with a good action on it, which I think I've seen other people complain about the same thing, you're going to have to do some work to make it all right. And, uh, I mean, this is now carryable to me. This is worthy of carry just because everything on it's right. Um, as far as looks, as far as tip up, it's got a flipper tab. And again, it's not a big deal to open it now. Like it works as good as it possibly can. And I like the way it feels now. Like that's a, that's a nice lazy flick. And uh, it sounds good when it locks up. It feels good when it locks up. And the other problem I had before I did the work on it too, is this lock would set in so hard that about... 30% of the time, I'd have to go get a flathead screwdriver and pry it back out, and you could hear it pop. And I think that showed up on the short that I did on this um, a while ago. Like, you'd have to go way back in the channel's life when I didn't have any energy when I was doing this. But, like I said, that's again, don't be scared of working on your stuff and trying to fix problems like this, because you can turn a bad knife into a pretty decent one. So now, I like this. I did not like it when I got it. But, all that being said, that's where we're at with Gerber. Thanks for looking at my crap. Uh, thank you for the thank you for the subscribers. I'm not redoing this takeover that, but we got more people coming in. I'm so grateful for it. Um, we are about a quarter of the way to a thousand. I mean, it's awesome just seeing anyone come in and watch this stuff. Uh, guys, thanks for the comments. I'm always enjoying seeing those, and I like at least getting some feedback if nothing else. And uh, if you haven't subbed, please do. We're trying to hit a thousand, and I got some stuff that I do want to give away. I've had a couple of really good ideas now. But all that being said, y'all have a nice day.